Hello guys and welcome to today's tropical update. I want to apologize that I haven't been around for the last three days. I've been really busy as of late, but I am back and hopefully we're going to be getting back to business. So we're going to get started here and we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do. We're going to take a look at the Western Pacific Basin. And as you can see, there is an Invest area right here where you see the orange circle. That is Invest 99W and it is located over the Philippines right now. Um, I will show you guys more details here about this here shortly, but this is what I think it's gonna do. I think what 99W is gonna be, is gonna do, well, and be, I think that 99W is gonna be a, very, uh, a tropical storm at the very least. Um, and it's gonna keep going west for a little bit and that's gonna take a sharp turn to the north and the west, in the east and it's probably gonna make a run towards Japan in the coming like three to four days maybe five you know it depends on uh, what picks this up and may, ha, makes it go towards Japan so that's just what I think will happen right now but uh, let's take a look at some of the details here it says a formation of a significant tropical cyclone is possible within 120 nautical miles either side of the line from 16.7 north, 110.0 west to 16.8 north to 118.0 west within the next 12 to 24 hours. The variable data does not justify in, uh, insurance uh, issues of numbered tropical cyclone warnings at this time. Winds in the area are estimated to be 25 to 30 knots, which is equivalent to 30 to 35 miles per hour. So this may be a tropical depression right now. May. Um, remarks. This is what it tells you. It's, it does have a low level of circulation. So that's, that's step one right there. You need that low level circulation center to produce any tropical development whatsoever. Uh, let's see here. Image reveals a small area of deep convection with small amounts of convective banding wrapping in from the east. 98E is currently in a marginal environment with warm 27 to 28 degrees Celsius waters. That's key right here. I'm gonna highlight that. 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. Um, this is definitely warm enough to a uh, to support tropical activity. So you know whatever it decides to do, you know it's probably going to do it here. So sea surface temperatures and low 10 to 15 knot. Yep, there we go. 10 to 15 knot wind shear, vertical wind shear. Uh, this is green. This is pretty much green to uh, high end uh, dark green. So I'm just, you know, even though dark green isn't really a thing in those colors, so I'm just going to call that dark green to dark green. A vertical wind shear offset by minimal upper level outflow. Global models resolve 98E as a wave feature with no cloud circulation. Um, I don't know why it's talking about 98E. That's nowhere near there, but we'll go with it. Um, are in a good agreement that it will track northwestward with marginal intensification. Maximum sustained surface winds are estimated at 25 to 30 knots. The potential for development of a significant tropical cyclone within the next 24 hours is high. Uh, so I guess... Uh, let's see here. I'm confused about why this says 98 E. I mean, the Joint Typhoon uh, Center does not cover the Eastern Pacific. So I'm guessing they meant 99 W. I mean, who knows? Okay, here is the Weather Nerd site. And as you can see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh this real quick for you guys. Hold on just one moment gonna be one of those that take forever here we go this should be the latest satellite imagery and as you can see this is probably where the low-level center is right now it's just these slots the slot in between the two convective burst burst here but as you can see there's plenty of convection to the west the north and west and there's plenty of convection to the east so what it's trying to do is trying to wrap it's the convection is trying to wrap itself around the center here and I do believe it's gonna do that here today 
Um, as I said, I think this will become a tropical storm at, at least um, before it starts making that turn towards Japan in the coming days. Um, speaking of the turn to Japan, we're going to take a look at the GFS for the West Westpac here. As you see, you have a pretty potent uh, system right in here with 996 uh, millibars, but that's associated with the front. As you can see, it's pretty elongated. So this is definitely a frontal system here that's probably going to try to push this upwards um, towards Japan. And this is what 99W is right now. It's 1,004 millibars. So this is well on its way to becoming at least a tropical depression before too long. So we're gonna go out five days, I think. And the GFS pretty much dissipates it, but I don't know how, how true that's gonna be. And as you can see, 60 hours out, it tries to make a comeback as a tropical storm. So that's, that's why I'm not leaving the tropical storm off the table here at the moment. So let's go out farther here. And as you see, it's definitely going to have some uh, land impacts in Japan here, right in here. So probably the the southeast and western coast of Japan needs to pay attention to what is going on with this system, because it looks like it's going to bring some pretty uh, gusty winds and some heavy rainfall that might lead to some flooding down the road. And uh, after that, it just harmlessly goes out to sea as you can see as I said here I'm gonna see if that's the same front yep that's the same front as I said it's gonna start pulling it away with it so let's see here uh, from 72 to 100 hours you're probably gonna be dealing with feeling the effects of the system along the Japanese coast so Please be on the lookout for this system as it comes through, according to the GFS. What does the European have to say about this system? And this this is our Invest 99W right here, this small speck of closed circulation right there. So as you can see, it's just north and east of the Philippines right now. So we're going to go out on time. As you can see, it tries to get some more verticity here as it gets near uh, this island right here and as you can see it just takes a, a sharp north and east turn right at that point it may not it may not show a millibar pressure on here but that is trying to become a tropical storm and from 72 hours to maybe 100 hours you know, according to the European, that's how long you're going to have to deal with this system here. So, as I said, if you got interest along the southeast and east coast of Japan, um, you know, just make sure you have all your loose items up off the ground and, and, out from, uh, and not outside where it can get blown around. Um, now there's, there's probably going to be flooding, flooding in the east coast. Of Japan so if you're driving turn around don't drown um, even even with a tropical storm you can have some pretty big hazards it doesn't it doesn't take a typhoon or a hurricane if you're living in the Atlantic or Eastern Pacific to cause problems we've, we've learned we've learned that lesson from tropical storm Imelda and tropical storm Allison back in the last like 15 or 20 years you know so just be careful if you live in Japan you know stay inside be safe and if you do that you'll be fine you'll be fine okay now that we got the Western Pacific out of the way we're gonna take a look at the Atlantic Basin here uh, and the Eastern Pacific for anything any development here and as you can see, the National Hurricane Center has nothing forming in the next 48 hours in the Atlantic or in the next five days in the Atlantic. I, we'll, we'll see how long this lasts. Um, you know, it's been like that before where it said no cyclones in the next five days and then suddenly poof, something, you know, forms and, you know, it's off to the races that's that's what this season has been all about it's been off to the races um 
It's only it's only mid July and we've already had six named storms. That is that is that's up there. That is up there with the hyperactive seasons that we have seen over the last twenty to thirty years. Um a lot of people are comparing the season to 2005. I mean, there is some comparisons, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as 20, 2005. Uh, you know, um, I, I do believe with the the information and support we have right now, this may be the second busiest season of all times. Um, that's why my predictions right now are 20 to 24 named storms. If you know, if I if I feel like I need to change those numbers, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But for the time being, those are my numbers for right now. So now that we looked at the uh, the Atlantic here, we're going to take a look at the National Hurricane Center for the Eastern Pacific and see what is brewing out there at the current time. So let's go out. There's there's here this system right here, but we're going to go out the five days just to see if there's anything coming out of the woodworks here in the Eastern Pacific. And it doesn't look like it. we have this system right here. All right, this is disturbance number one, and this is initiated at 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Thunderstorm activity has per uh, persisted near the center of a small low pressure area located less than 200 miles south-southwest of Socorro Island, Mexico. Environmental conditions are forecast to gradually become more conducive for development, and the system still has the potential to become a tropical de de depression during the next day or so, while it moves generally westward at 15 to 20 miles per hour. However, cube message here, however, conditions are expected to become less favorable for tropical cyclone development by Wednesday night. So, and the, the formation uh, formation chances are about 70% for both the 40 and 5 day, 48 and hour and 5 day forecast. So here's what I'm thinking with Invest 9080 here. Um, I do believe this will at least become a, it's not a minimal tropical storm. And this will, uh, this will be the D name storm going for the Eastern Pacific. Um, this will just add on to the list of sad, sad storms that the Eastern Pacific has had during the, ne during the last like yeah, month, month and a half. Um, usually in June we see our first hurricane in the Eastern Pacific, but you know if this keeps up, we're probably gonna see our latest latest hurricane on record form in the Eastern Pacific. And you know because we have the cool neutral to La Nina starting to set up out here in the uh, equatorial Pacific, that's why the Eastern Pacific is not, it's not starting up the way it should be. Because, you know, usually, you know, in June, we start to have a wave train come in and we have storm after storm after storm forming in June. But that never happened. We only had one system in June. One system? Since when? Since when does that ever happen? It, it, that hardly happens. That's why the Eastern Pacific and Western Pacific are so dead this year, is because there's some weird things going on in the ocean right now. And I do believe that, you know, this, this building La Nina definitely has something to do with that. Because that, that will help uh, push the favorability over to the Atlantic side of the tropical you know cyclone development so that's that's probably what's going on here all right well let's take a look at the atlantic first with the gfs and the european and as you can see right now there's there's nothing out there you get you got your double high pressures right here that are trying to reconnect with one another but we have a low here that are disconnecting it pretty much um so we're gonna go out in time here, let me move this up here. There's 24 hours. And as you can see, there's a low pressure system right in here that is in the south southern Caribbean, 1,009 millibars. But I do believe this will be a system for the Eastern Pacific to watch down the line. Um, 48 hours. Well, it looks like we got a strong tropical wave trying to come off of Africa here. Um, we're just gonna have to see what the Sierra and air layer is gonna do with it. Um, I do believe the Sierra and air layer is gonna choke this off 
before it ever gets started. We got a few tropical waves out in here. Let's go out the next 40, uh, 24 hours. Here is 72 hours. Uh, and you, as you can see, there's still nothing going on. We still have, you can still see these tropical waves coming through. And this is the uh, the strong tropical wave that was coming off. And as you can see, the, the Saharan air layer is just saying, nope, you're not doing nothing here. Um, well, let's say 96 hours. And as you can see, here's another, you know, area of low pressure here in the South Caribbean. That's probably going to head right into the Eastern Pacific. And then finally, 120 hours out. You can see another huge tropical wave trying to come off of Africa here. So, you know, this is, we're, we're getting to that point in time where these tropical waves are going to start coming off of Africa, you know, in numbers and larger and more robust than, you know, normal. So right now, nothing, to, nothing of no concern unless one of those random, you know, pop-ups start happening which can happen i've seen it um we're we're good on the gfs side of things so what does the european have to say about the atlantic basin right now all right it's, it still pretty much shows the same thing as the gfs you got the two bridges here with the low trapped in between them um, it looks like you got this is definitely a tropical wave right here because you can see the isotherms you know bent and wrapped around each other so there's 24 hours and this is this is probably what we're looking at for the eastern pacific right here this little donut here <clears throat> and you can see that the lines the lines are pretty uh uneven here so we got a tropical wave here a tropical wave there a tropical wave a tropical wave a tropical wave these are mind you that these tropical waves may not seem much on radar but they're still there they are still there so you know we gotta watch out for this going forward here is 48 hours and they, this ain't gonna be much they, 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 it looks like something but that's way up there and they're not gonna be any concern with that I mean there may be some uh, for inner uh, for the, the waterways here you know if you have boating interest you know you may want to watch out for this but it's not going to be a tropical or subtropical system. It's going to be a pretty windy, windy storm with non-tropical -char characteristics. So nothing going on. 48, 72, pretty much the same ordeal here. You know, here's our strong tropical wave that's coming off of Africa here. That the sail is going to uh, disrupt. Um, hour and twenty. Yeah, the, the European shows the same picture as you know the uh the gfs here as it pertains to the uh atlantic basin here so lastly before i get out of here we're going to take a look at the eastern pacific here and then right here this is our remnants of uh christine here it's it still has some pretty some isobars around it for looking kind of nice for the uh, post tropical system here you know then this big blob right here is our invest 98 e so we're going to take a look at the wind shear values here and as you can see the vertical shear is 17 knots so it's kind of on the verge of good and not good for development that's why it's why it's looking kind of slow right now to get underway but you know this is all just according to the gfs at the moment so here's 24 hours and as you can see there's something popping up right in here and there's the remnants of christine and there is another area to watch right here and this is what our 98w is or, or not w 98e is so another 24 hours out and you know this is pretty much the last chance that 98e has to develop and the gfs is not going to want to do much with it here's our next system right here to watch at the 48 hour mark we're going to see what the wind shear values here for this so this so the wind shear is only four knots so this may have a chance to develop in the future you know 
here's 72 and here's another feature that's going to want to pop up here so the eastern pacific is trying to throw these systems out here but they're just not succeeding on you know on turning them into anything so that that's you know that's why the, the eastern pacific is so sad right now is because it's just not favorable for these like serious development systems to occur so let's go out 96 hours and here's probably a tropical depression maybe going into 96 hours which is four days out from now um so something to pay attention to so 126 and here's a little something i think this was our system that was down here made its way over here so the gfs is pretty much saying nope nothing is going to happen in the eastern pacific at the very most something in tropical depression like may form but you know in the next five days i do not see a tropical storm well okay i take that back i may see a minimal tropical storm but i don't see anything above a minimal tropical storm happening in the eastern pacific at this current point in time so the european uh, this is the uh the zero hour here and this is the remnants of tropical storm christine here 98e here um here's right here and it, as you can see it's not really doing much with 98 98e and that's just the truth of it right now um the remnants of christine are starting to move its way out of the picture here 48 hours christine turns into an open wave pretty much and 98e is gone and no longer 72 you can see the tropical waves but you don't see anything really consolidating within the 72 with 96 hour mark and then you know 120 hours it just doesn't really show much so for the next five days the eastern pacific is pretty much going to be on the same trend that it has been as of late well besides christine christina i don't know why i keep on calling it christine christina <laughs> um but uh you know it's gonna just keep on doing the same trend that has been showing over the last couple of weeks here and that's just dead anyways i want to thank you guys for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this detailed look at the tropics, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a nice day.